Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Steve Rashid, and I'm your host for this evening, for this evening's edition, the April, what is it, 17th? April 17th edition of the uh, Live at the Whiskey Lounge series. Here, high atop the Whiskey Towers at uh, 27 Live. And um, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, as you may know, you may not know, this is a weekly series. It's here every Thursday. I am the host of the series. Uh, I am here every week, and, uh, and occasionally I'm one of the performers, as is the case this evening. So in a second I'll be joined by a couple of my dear friends, and we'll be playing some music for you that I hope you enjoy. Um, but I did, before we start, I did want to tell you just a little bit about the series and about what's coming up. Um, like I said, we are here every week. We do this live performance, um, and then we also do a live streaming of it. We do, uh, as part of the series, I wanted to to bring um, sort of a 21st century element to it. So we do uh, a full live recording of every performance. So you will be part of a live recording. Uh, and it is also being streamed live through the internet uh, so that if there's a particular week you can't make it, we hope that you're here every week, of course, but if you can't make it some week, you can uh, watch it online as it's happening. So it's all happening live. Um, so that having said, let me tell you a little bit about what's coming up. We have, uh, you have these little cards on your table and you are welcome to take those with you. They explain what's happening in the next several weeks. Um, but every week is a different style of jazz in here, so to speak. Uh, next week, there's the Don Sternberg Trio, which is string jazz. It's mandolin, uh, guitar, and bass. It's really, really fantastic. Uh, you know, I didn't grab one of those cards myself. I believe um, the Copacabana Trio is the week after that. And that is a beautiful, beautiful Brazilian trio. Uh, after that is a gypsy jazz group uh, with a uh, guy playing uh, guitar, another guy playing cymbalom, which is a, uh, it's a, a European instrument. Uh, and, and on and on. We have music from the 20s. We've got uh, uh, the great Judy Roberts will be visiting us in May. So there's lots and lots to, to come here, and it's a little bit different every week. So we do hope you come and join us. Um, your physical presence here helps us support this series, so when you're here, it makes it uh, possible for us to keep doing this. So thank you so much for coming this evening. Uh, and we'll be doing a little bit more fun stuff a little bit later involving you. So uh, we do have cameras throughout the room. So as I said, you are part of this broadcast. So uh, when we let you know, you can wave and uh, wave to all your thousands of friends who are watching online. Uh, for now, I'd like to bring up my good friends, Ken Hall and Stuart Miller. Ken is a great vibes player. Yeah, how about it? And rather than tell you how great they play, I think it'd be better if you just heard them. This is uh, Ken Hall on the vibe, Stuart Miller on the bass. And we'd like to start with a little song I wrote in 1942. There's a bright golden haze in the meadow Bright golden haze in the meadow The corn is as high as an elephant's eye Looks like it might climb clear up to the sky Oh, what a beautiful morning What a wonderful day I got a beautiful feeling Everything's going my way mm. Now the cattle are standing like statues The cattle are standing like statues They don't turn their heads as they see me ride by But one little brown maverick is winking her eyes Said, oh, what a beautiful morning what a wonderful day I got a beautiful feeling Everything's going my way My way
The sounds of the earth are like music The breeze is as busy, it don't miss a tree But one little weeping willow is laughing at me And said, oh, what a beautiful morning What a wonderful day I got a beautiful feeling Everything's going my way As is usually the case, people start to uh, arrive throughout the set here, so I know this will fill up a little bit more, but for now, I would love to uh, do a little something I've been wanting to do for weeks, which is actually have a contest, and you have a great chance of winning because you are uh, few in number at this point. So, um, because we're doing this live streaming, uh, and it's a very easy link to find, if you have a smartphone with you and can think of somebody that you would like that you think might enjoy seeing this performance and may be near a computer, if you text them right now, tell them to go to 27 Live and follow the link and go to uh, watch us. If they send you a text back saying they're watching the show, uh, the first person to do that, I'll buy you a drink. Does that count if I do it? Or? <laughs> it doesn't work if Ken does it, no. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> you, you can text my sons, yes. <laughs> so, if you manage to do that, let me know. First one to let me know, you got a free drink. While you're busy texting, we're going to play a blues tune by the great, uh, it was actually written by the um, uh, great blues man Jimmy Rogers, but I heard a recording of it by Mose Allison. And here we go. It's called That's All Right. One, two, one, two. You told me, baby, once upon a time, if I would be yours, you would be mine, but that's all right. I know you don't love me no more, but that's all right. But it seemed like every now and then I wonder who's loving you tonight. You told me, baby, our love was strong. Woke up one morning, all your fine words are gone, but that's all right. I know you got yourself another boy, but that's all right. But it seemed like every now and then I wonder who's loving you tonight.
job of loving you, you just didn't understand. And now you're trying to fool another man, but that's all right. I know you got yourself another boy, but that's all right. But it seems like every now and then I wonder who's loving you tonight. Yeah, it seems like every now and then I wonder who's loving you tonight. Yeah, it seems like every now and then I wonder who's loving you tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So do we have a winner? Anybody? No, nobody yet? Okay. The bar is well stocked, I'm just saying. Ah, here's, uh, here's a little thing I wrote. And it's about um, learning how to ride a bike. Great topic for a jazz tune, isn't it? Oh, yeah, of course. The website is 27live.com, like the number 27, 27live.com. And right on the home page, there's a link. There's a link to, uh, to be able to watch this. And we look so good in color, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> there's a 45-second delay, by the way, so... Uh, it's really interesting, to, the time traveling that you can do with it. All right. Sorry, Any other questions? My, my page okay, we're good to go? All right. Say what? My, my part got kind of lost. Oh, for God's yeah, sake. You find it? I got it. I got it. Did I screw something up? Nope. Nope. Okay. It is Holy Thursday. If you're following along your hymnal, it's number seven. <laughs> I do. I have to admit, I, there's a, some real Catholic guilt going on for me to even be performing here on Holy Thursday. So, so I promise towards at the end of the first set, I'll be washing everyone's feet. Called running by my side. The change was jingling in your pockets. The wind was blowing in my face. We couldn't stop if I wanted to stop it. You're wobbling all over the place. I'm flying down the road, you're pounding the ground. The world is a blur, and I'm laughing out loud. My heart's in a knot, but I think I'm all right Cause your hand's on my hand And you're running by my side Sometimes time stands still You don't know what to say you're having a dream in the middle of the day I'm flying I'm flying So I'd still be all right 
33 years makes a boy a man There's still plenty of things left to understand But somehow I know Way deep inside Wherever I go Wherever I ride Your hand's by my hand I'll be alright Cause you're running by my side Well, uh, I ain't the only one up here that's writing music. Uh, our lovely Ken Hall is also a composer. And we're going to play, uh, through the evening, we're going to play a few of Ken's pieces. And Ken has got one for us right now. Actually, it's a couple that are stitched together, right, Ken? Why don't you tell us that's a little right. bit about what this is all about? So um, these tunes, well, one of them is just, uh, we're, we're doing it kind of like an intro to other because it was really short. <laughs> so. Um, but it doesn't beg to have anything else. It's, uh, it's called Spiritual Mind, and it's just sort of uh, just a short kind of ballad. Um, but the other piece that we're playing is called uh, Walking with Jim. And uh, I had a friend growing up who, was, uh, who had muscular dystrophy. And he was supposed to live to about, be about 19. He ended up living till he was 44 years old. Um, but at any rate, in high school, he could, he could walk. Um, he usually had to have his hand on somebody's shoulder, but he, if he fell, it was like an all-out fall. I mean, if, he, if something got him off balance, he was like, boom, he was just like down on the ground. So you're, you're, you'll hear some pauses in our music, and that's kind of like when Jim fell down. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, I had a dream, you know, about 10 years ago, I had a dream uh, well, ac actually, uh, to go back, uh, he he was in a wheelchair from the time he was about uh, uh, in his early 20s until he was, you know, 44 when he passed away. But um, I had a dream, you know, about 10 years ago after he had passed away, and in the dream he was walking. So mm. uh, that kind of inspired the this song. So it's walking with Jim. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
beautiful piece. What? I got a response on oh, yes. Yay. Fantastic. Marsha Kazarinski, our winner. Yes. Yes, there we go. Did you win the drink? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. You did. All right. Marsha Kazarinski gets a drink on me. All right. Fantastic. What? Oh. Well, what's her name? Who is it? Arlie? Arlie Kaufman. If you're watching this, this is live. <laughs> yeah, it should be. There's, there is. <laughs> that's right. There is a there is a thirty second or forty five second delay, so we look look much younger on uh, on the screen. Thank you. Wasn't that a beautiful piece? Wow. I know. <laughs> It's already been choreographed. This is beautiful. OK, well, we're moving from something beautiful to something too, to, uh, completely ridiculous. This next piece is, um, I've been, uh, for a long time, interested in the music, or uh, the mu not the music, but the writings of an author named uh, Raymond Chandler. And Raymond Chandler, you know Raymond Chandler? All right. So Raymond Chandler is. Uh, uh, a, an author who writes or uh, wrote in sort of a style of he, he, uh, the film noir. He, I mean, his stuff. He was a detective novel writer, and a lot of his uh, stuff had a, uh, a protagonist by the name of Philip Marlowe, and uh, his, uh, m m many were made into movies starring Humphrey Bogart. Really wonderful movies, and I got completely caught up in the language of these these uh, wonderful novels and the novels. I mean, after a point, you sort of don't even care what the story's about. It's really just you kind of get caught up in the language. And so I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool to write something in the style of Raymond Chandler, or at least make that attempt? I mean, he wrote phrases like, um, a couple of my favorites were, uh, she smelled the way the Taj Mahal looked in moonlight. <laughs> um, what was the other? The other one was, um, oh, uh, I'm an occasional drinker, the kind of guy who goes out for a beer and wakes up in Singapore with a full beard. <laughs> so, uh, so I, and, and the other thing is that I'm very, uh, I've always been interested in the kind of slang that jazz musicians use uh, for, for decades. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of um, uh, interesting kind of this, this coded talk that jazz musicians use, and there's even... Uh, slang for the slang sometimes, like for example, the word cool. We all use the word cool, and it's slang for something that's great or wonderful. Um, but uh, a typical jazz musician's uh, take on that might be it's straight from the fridge, meaning it's cool. So, anyway, I started, I uh, did some research on some of the old slang that is, some of it is seldom used. Um, but it's interesting nonetheless, and some Raymond Chandler things, stole a bunch of those things, and came up with this uh, true story, something that happened to me in 1949 when I was hanging out with Benny Goodman in uh, New York. It's called Oh Benny. So me and Benny Goodman were hanging out at Condon's, swapping a few sides and knocking a few back. He brought some prez. I had the latest Clifford. Benny always packed the wildest wax So we're hanging loose And talking looser like Who's cubistic and who's a cat and Benny starts doing next week's drinking And I say, Pops, don't go lose your hat And he said, Steve, man I know my groceries And when I have a thought I brain it around and The way I see it this gig is over. The big bands are going down. Oh, Benny, don't be a fool. No need to upset yourself, because you're the king of swing. And that's cool. 
groovy as a movie So put your worries on the shelf You still rule the school But Benny says, these little hepcats with their oobop and their zoot suits and goatees and glasses and French berets. And me, I'm just trying to blow my rosewood. Looks like the Ray has had his day. So Benny's fussing and he's spitting and he's fuming. And meanwhile, there's a ruckus out on the street. Cause up pulls a rag top and out pops chicken dinner. That skirt yells, where's that lying cheat? And I say, Benny, you happen to know that muffin? And he said, oh, pop that blonde from the Belvedere. She'd make a bishop kick a stained glass window. But I stiffed her for lunch in cab fare here, uh-oh. But the door flies open and in walks trouble. She's dressed in red with a gauge up, Max. She throws a chair, locks her lamps on Benny. Benny jumps right out the back. Oh, Benny, did you really leave? I know you must protect yourself, cause you're the king of swing, and I'm Steve. But man, you left me hanging. Chick's about to blow a fuse from here to Santa Cruz. She's on fire. And she's hot as a rocket. She shoots me a look I can feel in my pocket. I don't know my elbow from my shoe. She could thrill me or kill me. Benny, what am I supposed to do? So that was the last time I laid my eyes on Benny. The king of swing changed my life. He was a master. I owe him plenty. Anyway, that's the story of how I met my wife. We did a song by uh, the great Mose Allison, and uh, we're about to do another one. This one is one that was sort of, uh, if Mose had any hits, this was sort of one of his hits. It's called Your Minds on Vacation. Mose Allison, if you don't know, is a fellow who um, has been a, uh, an important figure in the history of jazz, uh, kind of a musician's musician, um, kind of a bl jazz blues man from, the, from Mississippi, and uh, recently retired from performing. He's 86 years old after 65 years on the road. He, he uh, just retired. So um, uh, I'm proud to be among the musicians that uh, continue to do his music. He's a wonderful, wonderful uh, spokesman for jazz, and he did a lot of clever, interesting, witty, funny tunes. And, and in fact, the next time I'm going to be here as a performer, it'll be to do a Mose Allison tribute. So we'll be doing a whole evening of Mose Allison's music. But for now, here's this one. It's called Your Minds on Vacation. One, two, one, two, three. Sitting there yakking, right in my face Coming on exactly like you own the place You know if silence was golden You couldn't raise a dime Cause your mind's on vacation But your mouth is working overtime You're quoting figures and dropping names And telling stories and playing games 
the overlap and when things ain't funny you're trying to sound like you don't need money well if talking is criminal you'd be leading the life of crime cause your mind's on vacation but your mouth is working overtime Short, your talk is cheap. You don't be making promises that you can't keep. You don't like the song I'm singing, grinning, Barrett. All I can say is if the shoe fits, wear it. And if you must keep talking, please try to make it rhyme. Cause your mind's on vacation, but your mouth is working overtime. Yeah, your mind's on vacation, but your mouth is working overtime. Great. I love that one. <laughs> that comes in handy a lot. That's it. Uh, this one is uh, more of a serious piece. This is, um, was inspired, there was a, and I, I, I don't need to go into the details about the, what, what inspired this specifically, but there was a, um, uh, a moment when I was watching the news on television and it was yet another story of some horrific act by somebody upon somebody else. And I was thinking about the nature of regret and how sometimes when you, we do things, um, you know, you can go up to a person and apologize, say I'm sorry and get past it and all that stuff. But what happens in those cases when you do something when you really, you can't take it back and there's really nothing to do except live with, with what you've done and, and, um, and live with regret. And, um, so this is my stab at, uh, at that topic. This is uh, called Sail Me Away. <laughs> the last wave was stronger than the one before. It gets real choppy this far from shore. Don't know if I can take it can't stand much more take me away from here sail me away sail me away take me away from this world I don't know how I got here take me away from this world just sail me warned me he said the cards are stacked on a voyage like this you gotta work together to survive and once you set your course man you can't turn back but I'm afraid of where I have arrived sail me away sail me this world I don't know how I got here take me away from this world just sail me away when we first got started 
every thought seemed real. He had a vision, he had a plan. But now I lost my compass, and I can barely feel. How am I supposed to be a man? would give right now just to jump up and run free but it's a raining light and I can't see and the fire inside my throat is draining life from me take me away from here sail me away sail me for forgiveness I ain't asking for mercy I ain't asking for nothing except sail me away It's time for another piece by Ken. All right. Tell us about it, Ken. This one is called uh, Memories Not Forgotten. And uh, my dad, uh, the last eight or so years of his life, uh, dealt with Alzheimer's. And about a year and a half before he passed away, um, he was a, an avid sailor. He sailed all his life, literally all his life. Um, but one April, one cold April, I, I had a boat in Waukegan Harbor and uh, got my dad out on the boat and put him behind the wheel. And um, we sailed like eight, eight miles out into the lake. It was just uh, something that about that that he never forgot how to do. I mean, the 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 shifts in the wind and whatnot were all right there with his his movements um, even though it was hard for him to at that point walk or go mm -hmm. to the bathroom or, or whatever but he could still skip her a boat just fine wow. so anyway uh, that's what's inspired this song memories not forgotten
like that. Beautiful. There's a uh, songwriter named Dave Frischberg who um, has been active uh, for many, many years. Uh, he lives in the Northwest, I think he's Portland, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> is where he's based. But he's written a lot of uh, kind of uh, oddly funny songs. Um, one of them was uh, Van Lingo Mungo, which is just a, a recitation of strange baseball players' names. Um, <laughs> Uh, what's another quality time? Uh, oh, my attorney Bernie. You kind of know where that's going. Um, quality time and oh, oh, uh, peel me, peel me a grape. Peel me a grape. You might know peel me a grape. That was something that was uh, quite popular. A lot of people have recorded that. Diana Krall <clears throat> have recorded that. But and this one, this one was written in 1968. It's called I'm Hip. And uh, I made one small lyrical change, but other than that, it's exactly as he wrote it, and it seems to be right up to the minute. We're going to let Ken take a break on this one. Ken, you can go out and have a smoke if you want. Or All right. <laughs> if you don't smoke, you could start smoking. <laughs> no, you can stay right where if you want, but... square. I'm alert, I'm awake, I'm aware. I am always on the scene, making the rounds, digging the sounds. I read People magazine, cause I'm hip. Like Dick, I'm in step. When it was hip to be hep, I was hep. I don't blow, but I'm a fan. Look at me swing, ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. I even call my girlfriend man, cause I'm hip. Now every Saturday night, with my suit buttoned tight and my suede's on, I'm getting my kicks, gigging arty French flicks with my shades on. Cause I am cool, I'm a gas, I am anything but middle class. When I'm hanging round the band, popping my thumbs, digging the drums, squares don't seem to understand why I flip. They're not hip, like I'm hip. Scooby-dooby-dooby. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hip, but not weird. Like, you notice, I don't wear a beard. Beards were in, but now they're out. They had their day, now they're passe. Just ask me if you're in doubt, cause I'm hip. Yeah, I'm hip, I'm alive. I enjoy any joint where there's jive. I'm on top of every trend. Look at me go, vodiodo. Michael Buble knows my friend, I'm so hip. Now I'm deep into Zen, meditation and macrobiotics. And as soon as I can, I intend to get into narcotics. Because I am cool as a cuke. I'm a cat, I'm a cart, I'm a kook. I get so much out of life. Really I do, scoobity boo. One more time, play Mac the knife, let her rip. I may flip, but I'm hip. Yeah, I'm hip. Dave Frischberg. Oh, this one. This one. We're going to play one more tune this set and take a little break and come back and play some more for you. But I thought it might be nice if I played a little trumpet. <laughs> 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 that's so cute. Isn't it cute? Did that, did that come out of your pocket? <laughs> ah, that's a very funny story. There is a long story to this, to the, my purchasing of this trumpet, which, uh, oh, maybe we should just play the song, but it is called a pocket trumpet, and uh, it is, uh, it's actually the same amount of tubing as a regular trumpet. It's just doubled back on itself. It's just an extra curl on the front end and also on the, uh, coming on the, on the way out. So it's a little thicker than a trumpet, but it's the same. It plays, it sounds and plays just like a regular old trumpet. And I've always wanted to have one of these and finally found one. And um, someday I'll tell you a long 
poignant story about how this uh, trumpet came into my, my, my possession, but uh, rather than bore you with that, let me just play this tune. It's a great tune. Um, this is something that, a uh, really sweet tune that uh, took on, I think, added meaning after, um, after Hurricane Katrina, but it's a beautiful tune, even without that extra meaning. We'll be right back after a short break.
Great. <laughs> Not too loud? Oh, good. Good, good, good. Thanks for sticking around, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to start with our second set here. And this first one is uh, another song by the great Mose Allison, another one that I just absolutely love. It's called Parchment Farm, and Parchment Farm was the um, a euphemism for the uh, state penitentiary in Mississippi. And uh, I am starting, yes, dear. <laughs> So Parchment Farm, <laughs> Parchment Farm is a euphemism for the state penitentiary in Mississippi. And uh, this is a story about one of its residents that uh, didn't quite get it. Sitting over here on Parchment Farm. Sitting over here on Parchment Farm. Sitting over here on Parchment Farm And it ain't never done no man no harm They're putting that cotton in the 11-foot sack They're putting that cotton in the 11-foot sack They're putting that cotton in the 11-foot sack With a 12-gauge shotgun at my back rest of my life Well I'm gonna be on this farm for my natural life Well I'm gonna be here for the rest of my life and all I did was shoot my wife Sitting over here on Parchment Farm Sitting over here on Parchment Farm Hey, I know. You gotta love the love songs. Gotta love the love songs. My, uh, parents, uh, I'm in my 50s, my parents had me a little later in life uh, given the generation, they were in their 40s when I was born, and we just lost my mother this past year at the age of 98. Yeah, how about that? She was 98 years old. My dad was a different story. My father passed away when I was just 15. He was 59 years old, so um, there was a big long time my mother had without, uh, without my dad. Um, and I, listen, I recently heard this song, and I thought, this is a really pretty song, and something about it, there's no reference to anything historic or no particular person, historical figure or anything, but for some reason this just sounded like the 1930s to me. 
And uh, so I got home, and when I, after I heard it, I got home and researched it, and sure enough, it was, uh, it was written in 1930, and which is exactly in the 1930s, 1930, mid-30s is when my folks were in college together. And this song kind of reminded me of my folks, so whenever I do it, I think of them. And, um, and I think you'll know what I mean when, you get to, when it gets through the lyrics. It's just a very sweet tune, and, um, and it sounds like the 30s. Gee, it's great after staying out late Walking my baby back home Arm in arm over Meadow and Farm Walking my baby back home We go on harmonizing a song or I'm reciting a poem Owls go by and they give me the eye Walking my baby back home We stop for a while, she gives me a smile And cuddles her head to my chest We start to pet, and that's when I get Her powder all over my vest after I kind of straighten my tie She has to borrow my comb One kiss, then we continue again Walking my baby back home something a little bit different, um, another piece of mine. This is uh, something called Your Dot. And uh, I'll play it for you, and then I'll tell you the story behind it. Should we try it? About here, one, two, three. Yeah. You are in a dot. You are in a small blue dot. You are in a small blue dot suspended over Montreal. You are in a dot. You are in a very small dot. You are in a small blue dot suspended over Montreal. A small blue dot over Montreal contains a plane which contains you. Your plane inside your dot is traveling 630 miles per hour at 36,000 feet. You are in a dot. You are in a small blue dot. You are 
are traveling quickly in your dot suspended over Montreal. There's an empty seat beside you on your plane inside your dot for your mom, but she's not in it. She is traveling inside your heart, inside you, on your plane, in your dot. It's hard to believe that you are in a small blue dot, but it's easy to see. It's right there over Montreal. By dawn, your dot will have moved. It will be over Budapest, and your dot, and your plane, and you, and your mom, and your heart will be home. I am motionless in Chicago, not able to sleep. I am sitting. Watching your suspended small blue dot, my love, as it races with its precious cargo through the night sky. The story behind that is um, that uh, several years ago, uh, my wife's uh, mother passed away, and she, uh, uh, my wife was born in Hungary, and uh, she was born in Hungary, and her parents escaped during the Hungarian, Revo Hungarian Revolution, and uh, they lived here the rest of their lives, but after she passed away, um, uh, my wife wanted to take her mom's ashes back to Hungary. So she went to Hungary, and I couldn't go along on that particular trip. So that night that she traveled, I was watching this blue dot on a computer screen all the way over to Budapest. And uh, it was while I was hanging over Montreal that I got the idea for a, a poem that became that song. So that's the story. Time for another one by Ken. And I'm intrigued by this title, Ken. I don't know anything about this one. Well, this one, uh, it was an assignment, actually. <laughs> um, John Mulder, who was here last, last week, I believe, with Paul Wernicke, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a music director at a church, and I had John coming to play. And the pastor was, there was this YouTube video that was throwing out little phrases that he was, you know, going to be mentioning during the service. And um, I said to John, well, how about if you pick one of those phrases and I pick one and we each write a song? And mine was boast in my weakness. Ah. And I can't remember what John's was. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> All right. Did you have a thought about what that was about or... Boast in my weakness. Boast in my weakness. Um, just, I don't know. Just be, just be bold in, in your weakness. I don't, I don't. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you'll feel it. I think right, you'll right, feel right, it. Right, good. Yeah. It'll move you. All right, good.
Beautiful. Uh, here's another little odd tune of mine. This is a, um, uh, as a lot of my pieces are, it's a fictional, but it's uh, based somehow in, in some reality. Uh, without going into a terribly long story about it, um, a number of years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago, a buddy of mine got married on the West Coast, and a bunch of us uh, went. Uh, well, he was a former, uh, former Chicagoan musician, now a musician in L.A., and uh, a bunch of us old musician pals went over, over to, uh, to join him in his wedding, and um, so it was sort of a time for a bunch of us guys that don't uh, get a chance to hang out together much to hang out together for a weekend, and we had a great time, and uh, along the way, we, buddy of mine and I rented a convertible and drove up Pacific Coast Highway, and it was like, wow, we having a great time. <laughs> we were young dads, and it was like, wow, guys hanging out. This is really a blast. <laughs> um, so uh, this is called West Coast Lament, and it starts out with the first couple of lines are sort of about going to L.A. and taking this trip, and then the rest of it is t entirely fiction, whatever it means. Um, and um, the other thing, though, musically, is that uh, there was a movement in, um, in the 1950s called, it was called, loosely termed West Coast Jazz, but it was Chet Baker, Jerry Mulligan, um, these guys that played in a particular style, and I was, I'm very enamored with that style, so I um, uh, tried to write this sort of in that style. So this is called West Coast Lament. the coast in a rented MG. We yelled at the mountains with the top down, waving goodbye. The ocean breezes made us feel high, reminiscing about those Cold War days when we were spies and we kept the country safe from the Ruskies and the big one. It was a simpler time. It was take, it was give. You knew who they were. You knew where they lived. We had our bunkers, and they had theirs. We all had nukes, but we had spares. Good fences make good neighbors, I always say. No one could touch us, no one could touch us. Not like today. swinging up in Ohio, hummingbirds outside the hotel, the cloudless skies, the band was cooking, the cooks were swinging, the synchronicity, the young couple was madly in love, the angels were singing, it was a simpler time, it was take, it was give, I knew who you were, you knew where I lived, I had my bunker, and you had yours too. We were both out of ammo by the time we were through. Good fences make good neighbors, I always say. No one could touch me, no one could touch me. Not like today. Something's magic about California. You never hear a negative sound Ooh, Brings out the best in all mankind Land where the redheads abound The sun upended our grand affair Nothing quite so sublime Retired G-men just making their flight Man, what a time Hey, hey, hey. 
Thank you. Uh, my wife and I have two sons. They are uh, now all grown up, 21 and 25. But uh, when our younger son was little, I mean, like really little, like three, four, something like that, he um, would frequently um, say things that I just thought were pretty fun, and I would I'd make note of them. And one of the things I really liked was his sense of time. I don't think it was unique to him. It's just I think it's that, that point in life where you haven't been on the planet long enough to really have a sense of, of history. Whenever he would refer to something that wasn't happening in the present moment, he would say it happened a long, long day ago. I mean, that could be five minutes ago, or it could be last week or next year. It sort of doesn't matter. It was just, you know, not now. It was a long, long day ago. And I just love that phrase and that, that thought that, you know, we're living in the now, and that's something that's not now. And um, so I took that phrase and a couple of the things that he was fond of saying and strung it together with a few thoughts of my own and came up with this hymn-like thing called A Long, Long Day Ago.
you, thank you, thank you. Had I written a song for my daughter that would have been one of her phrases, it would have been, cook me a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I hope I you're watching, that. Jen. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, I played a little trumpet. I think now, time to play a little harmonica. <laughs> That's actually not the harmonica I'm going to play. I know what you're thinking. He's sitting here with a piano, and he's got vibes and a bass, and they haven't done a single reggae tune. <laughs> I, exactly. This is just screaming reggae, isn't it? <laughs> um, so has anyone in here ever eaten at Prairie Joe's? It's a restaurant here in Edmondson. All right, good. So, you'll, so there's one person who will know what I'm talking about. Oh, and you too. Um, Perry Joe's is a restaurant here at Evanston, and it is a, um, uh, it's this kind of diner-ish kind of place. It seems like, it looks like a diner, but when you walk in, it's, it's kind of not a diner. They do have dinery kind of food, you know, you can get eggs and hash browns and whatnot, but they also have the curried lentils and, you know, kind of interesting other stuff that's, that's uh, really quite tasty, and uh, I love the place, and in addition, when you walk in there, it feels like you've walked into an artwork. I mean, and, and in fact, the proprietor is an artist, and on his off days, he paints and he sculpts and he does stuff, but he does a, has a lot of found object art that he has. And so when, you, so when you're in there, you're, it almost feels like you're in a state of suspended animation. You're sort of inside this artwork, and you're kind of, uh, kind of living in there. So I really thought that might be kind of a fun place. You almost we used to play um, uh, uh, I Spy With My Little Eye with our kids when we would go in there because there's so much stuff to kind of see when you're in there. I thought that might kind of be a fun starting off point for a song, so I set out to write this. Um, and I also uh, spend a fair amount of time in coffee shops, and I was noticing how some of the regulars in coffee shops seem like they're sort of in a state of suspended animation. And so I combine those th two concepts into this thing called Prairie Joe. Mm. See reggae. The basketball's frozen in the net. John Wayne is busy on the wall. Next to Jesus and the presidents, the flying telephones refuse to fall. With the cups and saucers floating in formation, led by the vacuum cleaner rocket, Mr. Polaroid's there to capture the scene. Got a picture in my pocket. Oh, Rose, please don't go. Oh, Diane, I love you so. You crank up that toilet paper radio and pour another cup of that good Prairie Joe. Policeman sitting at the counter sits there day by day by day. I ain't seen no criminals around here Guess he's keeping it that way. Anonymous got famous down the road a stretch for putting roses on an etch a sketch. My napkin's filled with pictures that I take. What's it take around here for a guy to get a break? Oh, Rose, please don't go. Oh, Diane, I love you so. Crank up that toilet paper radio and pour another cup of that good Prairie Joe.
One day I gotta wake up and get out of this place Have a shave and take a shower But that clock always says it's five to five And I gotta wait till the top of the hour Oh Rose, please don't go Oh Diane, I love you so Crank up that toilet paper radio And pour another cup of that good Prairie Joe time for just one more number this evening and um it is uh i was joking around to somebody that uh in fact i may have even said it from the stage here that uh my catholic guilt was was uh, my catholic guilt was uh, setting in for the fact that uh, it's holy thursday where if we're doing this um but uh, uh so i was only partially kidding i take uh, i know it's a very solemn day for a lot of people and i respect that and um, so I thought we'd end with something that was from a CD of mine called Song of Songs I did years ago, um, and it's uh, spiritually based. And this is something that has sort of a little bit of a hopeful thought to it. It's an instrumental piece, but it's called Winter is Past, and let's hope that is true. Yeah, how about that? Exactly. Yeah, how about that? So with that, we'll leave you with this last one. Uh, once again, that's Ken Hall on the vibes. This is Stuart Miller on the bass. Thank you, thank you. My name is Steve Rashid. I'm the host of the series, and uh, next week will be uh, Don Stierenberg and his trio, which is a fantastic string jazz group. Uh, the week after that is uh, the Copacabana Trio, which is a Brazilian group, and the week after that is Alfonso Ponticelli, which is a, a gypsy jazz group. So there's uh, lots, lots of good music coming up. Uh, it's all very varied, and uh, we hope you come back and join us. Thank you so much for being here. Um, your physical presence here helps us support this series. So please tell your friends, come back again. We love you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Come back and see us again. Thanks.